All right. So we're here today to talk about net promoter scores um, and how our technology partner Zoho can integrate with what we are doing around net promoter scores. And net promoter scores is commonly defined as um, a, a market research metric. And think of it very simply as how likely are you to recommend my product if you're a client? And how likely are you to recommend working here if you are an employee? And rate me one out of 10. So not, not complicated, just a hard thing to consistently implement in your business to drive a certain kind of behavior that uh, helps you to move your business forward and get the right kind of feedback. So uh, NPS scores is, is, a, is a crucial part of the Rockefeller habits, which is part of the scaling of methodology that we teach in the EO Accelerator program. And that's underlying to a lot of EO members and a lot of really large businesses worldwide uses this scaling up methodology to put in place the metrics inside of the organizations that allows you as the owner to scale rapidly and also work on your business and not in your business. So there's a whole bunch of things that you need to do. You have to start with a healthy team. That's habit number one. There's a bunch of things underlying to that. Then you have to align to whatever it is you're here to do and be very clear that everybody knows what you're doing. You want a really good meeting rhythm, weekly, monthly, daily. We, and this all the stuff we teach in scaling up and it's gotta be a rhythm in your organization. So information flows through quite beautifully with clear accountabilities assigned. I personally use both Zoe and Monday to sign accountabilities across the organization and then to have those accountabilities measured um, in those meeting rhythms. Why we're here today is habit five and six. There's a few other things down there, right? Uh, uh, employees can articulate a good week, uh, core values and purpose, um, you know, KPI, what the KPIs look like and dashboards. But for the purpose of today, we're talking about habits five and six, which is employee feedback and customer feedback. You need to have systems in place to regularly and accurately gauge where you're at, both externally with your um, customers and internally with your teams. So that if there's stuff that needs to be corrected and stuff that needs to get done, that you can get onto it. And that's, that's a crucial part of what a lot of us probably don't do well enough or regularly enough in terms of uh, both this external and internal, internal place. The Rockefeller habits gives you very, very clear uh, systems and, and frameworks for doing that. And that a, lot, a big part of that is the net promoter score, which they even regularly track. And, you know, you may not get that sucker up in both cases. Um, and if it's, not, if it's not going up, what should we be doing differently inside of our organization? So just to go, cycling to the rest of it, we sort of talked about values and purpose, articulate the strategy, uh, know a great day and week, every single person should know where they stand and plans and performance should be visible. So when we do the scaling up training in those um, accelerator learning days, we cycle through all of these habits over a two year cycle. Where does Zoho fit into this, guys? So think of it as one system that replaces a bunch of other systems. And I am a fan of the best of breed systems. As I've cycled along, I used to use MailChimp for my uh, newsletters. Now I use campaigns because it integrates directly from my contact list in Zoho. I used to um, run all my social media stuff in all the different platforms. Now I've got integrated dashboard in Zoho on social. Uh, when I now have my customers' uh, feedback, I use Survey instead of Survey Monkey, and I also use forms now for my indemnities and my customer um, registration forms that, that talks directly to their contact page within the CRM. So there's a bunch of things that I use it for. Andrew, who's with us on this call from Zoho South Africa, uh, and Wilhelm, who's with us from Outsource CFO, will have a lot more to say about the multiple functionalities um, that Zoho can can give you. But I want us to do, for the purposes of this session, cycle back to feedback and NPS scores. And as such, I am going to give the mic to Wilhelm from Outsource CFO. Wilhelm particularly um, is uh, the CEO of Outsource CFO and they also run a business called Integrate that helps companies onboard Zoho. Uh, and that is, that is sort of the third most important thing in his life after um, his baby coming in two weeks and uh, worrying about his fitness as his cycling is gonna go out the window. Uh, but for Helen, can I give the mic to you? And then once for Helen's done, um, uh, myself and Andrew will talk a little bit about how you can actually use the system as an EO member. But Helen, over to you. 
Fantastic. Thank you guys um, for the opportunity. Uh, so yes, um, very, very much uh, looking forward to uh, welcoming another little boy uh, in our household. Uh, then there will be two boys, so double trouble, um, and it, it, it's excited for, for that. So um, today is going to be a, a, um, a my session. I'm going to keep it short. I'm going to keep it sweet, and I'm going to keep it practical. Um, so th the first thing that our NPS, anyone that's gone through the scale the scale up methodology, uh, knows that it stands for Net Promoter Score. Okay. Now, if you tell a if I tell a customer, um, hey, would you, wouldn't you mind doing my NPS? The customers look at look strange at me and saying, what is NPS? That sounds weird. Um, it's 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 not something people relate to. So the, the first thing that I want to say about NPS when when working with that practically, and I'll show you some examples now, is that when you are gathering this feedback from your client, it needs to be relatable. It needs to be in a language that they understand, and it needs to be as little as time, as little as much time consuming as possible, uh, because we all know how busy we are uh, on a on a day to day basis. Our customers are equally busy, and then they, they don't have 10, 15 minutes to complete a survey. Um, they might want to spend one minute or 10 seconds to complete a survey. So one thing that I'll touch on uh, during the course of uh, the session is just um, keeping it simple versus making it complex. And, and where's the medium? Uh, where, where, where do we find the, the best uh, route for engagement is uh, for a client? All right. So I'm quickly going to share my screen. And if I can get a thumbs up uh, from someone that they can see my screen, great. All right. So uh, as you guys know, uh, Zoho, uh, and specifically your partnership with, with Zoho at the moment, focuses on um, a, a value bundle around Zoho One. Uh, and again, it's made up of 40 plus of the top tier Zoho applications available out there. Um, and But for today, we're going to be focusing on a, a feature called Survey. Um, there we go. Where am I now? There we go. Survey, which will be making use for the collection of Net Promoter Score. Um, and then we'll also be making use of CRM in terms of how that is how that is gathering feedback and how, um, how one can actually use that in your business. All right. So what I've done here is put together a very, very simple form just for today's um, purposes. And I'm going to quickly pop that in the chat. And what I want you to do that's uh, to everyone. So if everyone can just take a couple of seconds to complete your, your name, your surname, your email address, and then on a scale of zero to 10, how likely are you rec recommend our brand uh, to a colleague or a friend? And once you've done that, you can just hit submit uh, submit for us, uh, and then I'll I'll go go through that through the information um, uh, practically now. So some some organisations go two approaches. The first approach is anonymous NPS, to which is which is really great because you get that overall anonymous sense from the from the client, the client has no fear or favor in terms of um, oh, that, what I've got a good uh, relationship with Wilhelm, a good rapport with Wilhelm, um, but I don't want to be, I don't want him to feel that I'm now critical towards him, but yet I'm unhappy. So sometimes uh, anonymous uh, NPS works well, and that's when you, and we found that that's when you're offering a very generic service, something that's used by by the masses that's really where an anonymous nps comes into play we we're in a services business uh we don't have millions of clients we've got hundreds or thousands of clients and we want to be able to build relationships with our clients and ensure that if they are happy we want to be we want to know about it and if they are unhappy we really want to know about it so that we can either look at our process, our people, um, or our strategy and, and address that with the client. All right. So therefore, when, when Auto CFO collects NPS, we're looking at uh, a um, uh, what's the opposite of anonymous, 
we, we know the people's names, their surnames and their email addresses, but we're not asking for anything else because we as an organization already have access to that, to that information and it sits on our CRM. All right. The one thing that I would recommend to all organizations when doing NPS, and if it's not anonymous, when you are collecting people's names, email addresses, surnames, anything like that, put in a disclaimer. Okay, we all know about Poppy, Protection of Personal Information Act. We all know about GDPR, uh, which is the, the UK version. There's a US version, irrespective of which territory you are operating in you will see that there's a, a, whether Poppy applies to a country or not, there's a massive trend worldwide to look after data protection and a lot of disclaimer that goes, it, a lot of work that's done when disclaiming. So when you're setting up your, your NPS questionnaire, uh, we just put in a link here, which refers to our website, because we don't want a, the static, the, the 300 page uh, terms and conditions on here. We just want to make it easy for, for clients to, to access it, should they want to access it. All right. So um, I, I hope that everyone has had the ability to quickly sub submit um, the, the survey. So I'm quickly going to go to the survey. So how, how I got here, I went to Zoho and I went to surveys. There we go. I was going to open it up nice and fresh for everyone to see. And immediately here will be all my surveys. And I can see that on my Net Promoter Score survey, and again, I built this for the session, uh, there's, there's nine responses on here. So immediately I can get a nice overview of um, that um, how many how many times the survey was visited. So immediately I can see 13 people visited, only nine responded, which is also a very important rate uh, that one wants to track as you go through your net promoter score. Um, and what I quickly want to show here is that uh, let's quickly have a look at the individual responses. So we've got a we've got a um, Wahid Wahid. Thank you. Uh, you've given us an NPS of nine. Uh, that's that's really exciting. And um, if I if I look at a at a another sub a submission, Dion Dion seven. Okay, that's okay. But clearly we've got some room for improvement here. Um, and so forth and so uh, and so forth. There we go, Daniel as well. All right. So it's it's really nice to get this variety of NPS submissions. Now, great. Now what? We we have our NPS information from our clients. They've submitted it. Now what do we do with it? All right. So there's a couple of different ways of handling it. So at Outsource CFO, we want to be able to, if, if someone is comment, commenting on our services and giving us a, a good rating, we want to be able to give them the opportunity to share that further. Something like a Google review. So what we've done with our NPS, and I'm quickly going to go into the builder and go to the, our hub and say triggers, We've built in the we've built in uh, email triggers. So this is something that's really functional within the Zoho uh, survey and takes only a couple of minutes to set up. And we've built two email trigger triggers. So the the first one is saying thank you for your rating. How about a Google review? Now we don't want to send this to the client that gave us a two. Hey, okay? uh, we don't we don't necessarily want that Google review out there. If a client is giving us a nine plus or eight plus, we want to have them actually share their, their good experiences. So we've got an email template that automatically kicks off. Um, Wahid, seeing as you've given a nine, you would have received an, an email saying, thank you very much. Um, and here's the link, I'll, I'll show that to you shortly. And anyone that's given less than a nine receives an email saying, thank you for your submission of your survey. Uh, just again, that, that confirmation, because a thank you go, my mom taught, taught me and like most of our parents taught us, a thank you goes a long way. Okay? Um, so a client, uh, even though it's an automated email, receiving that the client is, is, uh, feels that they are um, being appreciated. Peter, I see a hand there. Yeah, um, Wilhelm, thank you. I just wanted to check, how do you build those differentiators in? How do you, very, very, can you show me that? 
Yes, absolutely. So if I if I'm and if I'm in um, as a survey, I go to the builder, I go to the hub, and I go to trigger emails, which I manage. I can create the email trigger, um, and right up top you can add a condition. So what I'm doing here is saying that if and this this would be one of the variables on my um, on my question on my survey is more uh let's say greater than eight so that means anything above a eight equal meaning nine or ten will get the following type of email and the great thing about this email it's not just a generic email you can insert your variables into it whether it's email address first name uh, last night a name any information mm. that you're gathering you can insert that and then i create a second trigger for uh which i say anything less than a nine uh, meaning eight and below, uh, which will be. And so you can do even more. You can say between a six and a five, et cetera, so that you can set up multiple different responses based on the client's feedback. Perfect. Thank you. Most welcome. All right. So that's the first thing that we do with our NPS. Apart from just gathering it, we're also looking for high quality reviews so that we can get further reviews from clients and it, it does work. Um, the other thing that we also do it is we send thank you gifts once a year. Um, we, 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 I'm a big coffee drinker. I love coffee. So we regularly send coffee or coffee mugs or anything or typically related around coffee. Uh, and clients love it. Uh, we also send them gear, um, OCFO t-shirts, integrate t-shirts. Uh, it's very funny, but I regularly get a call saying, I saw a guy in, in um, Uppington walking around with an OCFO t-shirt. Do you have someone working there? It's like, no, we don't. But our brand is walking out there already uh, just through sending our, our thank you gifts. So that's something really where NPS um, comes in for us. The second thing that we do with our NPS is that we integrate it with, with CRM. So if I go to my integrations, um, it, we ensure that all the information that we collect um, goes straight into Zoho CRM, whether that's email address, last name, first name, as well as the NPS, which is which is the rating. So I've already opened up um, my my Zoho here. So I went ahead and submitted a couple of responses last night, just to give you a, a quick show and tell. So in Zoho CRM, I'm looking at my contacts. Uh, I'm looking at Mr. Wilhelm Walser, and here I can see that his we hold the last NPS score. So we don't care if it's been a, a nine, 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 nine throughout the years. We want to know what is your current NPS that the client is rating. Because if the client gave you a hundred tens, but the last one that they give is a two, the average will still be way above nine, which is a green light. But in actual fact, at the moment, this client is very unhappy. So you want to be able to know on a specific client what is the NPS rating, the latest one? So that was that was the, the that's the main aim that we push this the information into CRM as well. Wahid, I see a hand. Yeah, just a quick one. Can you only see the last one, or can you opt to see, you know, a trail of of the different scores you were given? It would be it would be also quite interesting to see if you want was a seven and he's now gone to a nine so that I'm, I'm improving my service term or he was a nine he's now an eight what happened absolutely so uh, it, it all depends on how you configure zoho but you can absolutely hold that information that's the the, the short answer the second answer is that for every and this is the way that i set up a survey connected to crm for every single server that's submitted we also send through the net promoter score as a physical attachment. Okay, so we can have the detailed history of this client right there on, on CRM. I don't have to go to survey, which is collecting my NPS, which is, has all the information as well. We operate in CRM. We bring everything back into CRM so that as a, from a user experience, even though I'm using all the different aspects, I've got one place where I can go to look at all my client information and the result of all that client information. Does that answer your question, Waid? Okay, 
Fantastic. Liam, I'm sorry, uh, maybe I can just jump in. Yes. Andrew here. Um, so you're correct. So in Zoho, there's many ways you can get the apps to talk to each other, but there is one other way where you can do a straight integration with Zoho Survey. And then if on the bottom left of your screen there, you see there's a related list called Zoho Survey. There we go. When you click on that, it will give you a list of every survey that that person has replied to. And you can actually automatically send your surveys out of Zoho CRM. So maybe you want to try that there. I don't know if you've connected the, the CRM to the survey. I have settings. on our proper organization. I didn't do it for, for today's session. Try, mm -hmm. uh, try to keep it as a, a high level overview. With okay, next perfect. week's session, we're going into automate, which the focus is automation, where we're looking at expanding the scope. But you're absolutely correct um, for including that Zoho survey integration direct with CRM. Okay, perfect. Great. Thanks. Very good. All right. Um, yes, Dion. A question for you on that. Create surveys of this. Send survey. Um, and what's take survey? Is that if you want to do it on the fly with a yes. client? Okay. Brilliant. Thank you. Yeah. So take survey. Uh, this is typically where you are on the phone with the client. And uh, so I wouldn't say that it relates the take survey button doesn't necessarily re relate directly to NPS as such because you want to give that to the client and get the client's feedback um, if the client for some reason say look if uh, if I would ever give you a score I'll give you a six out of ten then yes that that could make sense but where the take survey is we do a every three months we do a um, a quality check with a client, whereby it's a meeting that we have with a client, whereby we ask them a set of six questions uh, that we use to rate our own performance with any specific client, as well as look for areas for upsell, et cetera. So that, and to get a client to complete that, it's a mess. We've tried, doesn't work. We've put incentives, it doesn't work. So. We've made it part of our internal processes for our team to actually do that with a client to go through that. And that's where they would click on, on take survey and complete it on behalf of the client. And just based on uh, your experience, what do you find is a reasonable um, return rate on NPS scores? So, when we finish a job, currently uh, Zaho sends a message saying thank you for thank you for buying from us, etc. I haven't added the NPS score which I'd like to do. What sort of score should I, I aim for? What turn in terms of quantity of surveys coming back? What what's the normal number? Or is it? Um, I personally don't have a a medium <laughs> average for you. Um, yeah. the, I would say, practically speaking, two out of 10, uh, is what we see, uh, 20% okay. success rate for return is high, but again, we have a services business so that my client knows my name, Dion, I don't know your business in it. And I don't know the exactly what service you offer, but if you at all offering a volume based service, then it, the, the percentage drops. Because, and that NPS is typically uh, on the, when someone is unhappy. <laughs> that's, the, yeah. that's, that's the truth behind it, which is also good. You want to know if, that, if only 2% of your um, client base is completing your NPS and that 2% is very low, it's, I mean, it also means that only 2% of your client base is unhappy um, the, or unhappy and willing to voice it. It might mean that there's more and they're just not willing to voice it. But to answer your question, services business, maximum 20%, uh, volume business, 2%. Thank you very much. Perfect. All right. So, um, when, so now that we have our NPS, we have it inside of, of, Zoho, inside of Zoho, 
uh, we need to follow our own processes in order to decide what do we actually do with it. Uh, in pers uh, services business, I pick up the phone, I call the client, uh, I, I, speak, uh, I, I chat through it. But the, the other thing that we really pay attention to is monitoring of our NPS. Now, we, we follow the scale-up methodology. It's a key metric on our board reports, um, and it's something that we report on on a monthly basis. Uh, or weekly if there's any flags that needs to be flagged. So how we do that is we've got two mechanisms. Number one, we have a NPS dashboard that we've built in our CRM through analytics. And this is something that's viewed on a daily basis to see the average NPS across all our customers on any specific either day or month. Okay, so we, get, we, actually, we track our, our average NPS per month. Uh, throughout the organization because we want to make sure that we keep a close eye on it and if it is low if it is a five that we we work towards that curve going upwards okay so that's the first part um, that we do with the data the second thing that we do with the data is that we don't go and um, spend lots of time uh, going to build reports, et cetera. Zoho already does that for us. So um, Zoho survey sends two emails for us. Number one, it says uh, it sends a daily NPS report that gives us a, a overview of what's happened today. So today we've had three responses. So obviously this was yesterday. Um, these are the three, uh, these are the, um, the fields and their response rates. Um, and then you can see Mr. JJ Dog, that was me, uh, my wife, and myself, um, just going through it, answering and giving you the average rating. So currently we're sitting on an eight um, and gives us the full feedback on any specific day. We also do this on a weekly basis. So even though if the daily one, we will check for any outliers, but the weekly one is the one we would use to put into a report or a monthly one we would use to put into a board feedback report. So that's something that we, we, we use um, frequently um, in, in, to ensure that we keep on driving that. Now, I'll be honest, we don't, if we look at um, the 10 areas uh, that, that uh, Peter threw on the screen a little while ago for scale up methodology. This section is still the section that we internally rate ourselves, ourselves the lowest on. We don't get enough customer feedback. We want more. Um, we want clients to actively engage with us. So it's something that we are, that we are um, exploring on a, on a strategic level, on a regular basis. So it depends on your organization. Some organizations go and put it, put the NPS rating in their email signature. Uh, and instead of calling it NPS, they put it, they call it uh, rate our service or how we do it, um, or t tell us how you're feeling about our service, something like that. Something that's a little bit more relatable to a customer, something that they are willing to engage with. Okay, so that's that's one way of doing it. Other ways of doing it is sending a, a quarterly survey, including that in your newsletter. What I typically tell clients is the more freely it's available out there, the, the more feedback you would get from your customers. And yeah, it hurts when we get negative feedback. Hey, guys, <laughs> it really hurts when we've poured our whole heart and our whole soul into this. And then the customer comes back and gives you a two out of 10. Um, but in the long term run of the business for the health of the business, that's what we need. We need that level of feedback. All right. So Zoho survey is really um, epic, I would call it, um, to keep things uh, simple. Some organizations, and this would be my, my closing remark, is that some organizations, however, want to ask um, more detailed surveys uh, when it comes to NPS. Um, and you can fully fled build that, that survey out um, within in Zoho survey. And Andrew, you're welcome to jump in here, but this is just my personal experience with uh, comparison because we've chatted about as our survey, and we've also mentioned a system called Zoho Forms. So some organizations use Zoho Forms for their NPS. Some organizations use Zoho Survey for their NPS. Now, what we practically found is the following, is that when we look at Zoho Survey, it's extremely effective when it's light and easy, 
and there's no logic that needs to be built into the survey. And what I mean with logic, I mean that if they answer question um, three, um, give it a four, then suddenly display the following 15 questions. Or if they give it an eight, then display the following three. Um, so what we found with is four organizations that want to make it a little bit more comprehensive in terms of building the logic into the question questionnaire as well. That's where we personally have used forms, for example. So yeah, I've got a, a form and this is the Zara starter pack that um, Peter has circulated to you guys. And there's only two questions to say, you ready to let go? Or do you want to uh, arrange a call and, and know more information? And based on the answer, it will decide what further questions to ask. Um, so if I say, ready, let's go, it gives me the following uh, list of questions. If I say, arrange a call, it gives me a different set of questions. So that's really where we, the only place whereby we would use forms when we're looking at NPS is if you have a very small client base, uh, and I'm talking, I'm you're talking it's a interpersonal, you're dependent on each other, you're service providers to each other, you, it's a close knit industry. And um, this is some, and you need to have more in depth feedback whereby the client actually knows what's happening, the output of your production facility or your CRM facility or your uh, customer service facilities. If you need more in-depth um, variable-based questions, uh, forms is something that one could utilize to achieve that function, yet still calculate that back to uh, overall NPS. Andrew, I don't, I don't know if you have any comments on that. That's just our, our practical experience and use with the tool. Yeah, no, you're right. I mean, it just depends on what you're gonna do. I mean, mm. with NPS is you wanna try and keep it you know, short and sweet. You, yes. you really want to get a response, you know, and we've actually just done a, a survey throughout Africa and we realized that the surveys that we did weren't really well responded to if they were just sent via email. And so we then started following up via phone call and we had a far better response rate by saying, hey, guys, listen, we have sent the survey out. Would you mind, you know, um, filling it out? We got a lot of people then responding at that point. And then we also realized that if you add a little bit of an incentive, <laughs> you'll see people also you know respond mm. to your service a lot easily so if you say to them we'll give you i mean we've got wallet credits that we can give out but i mean it could be like you said a coffee voucher uh, and you could go down to a, a local store or maybe strike up a deal with vida where you pay half and they pay half for the coffee or whatever mm. however you strike the deal but it's something that really um it's kind of makes uh, your company show that you you care you're just you're trying to give something of value um, to get them to at least let you know exactly how they feel. Mm -hmm. So no, you're right in saying, I mean, between survey and forms, it's, it's dependent on what you need. I mean, there's certain fields you can get in, in Zoho forms, uh, but survey is, is the best for, for getting this, this type of feedback. And you can also, both of those apps, you can actually operate them offline. Mm -hmm. So we know some guys that actually use survey um, on, um, in the mines. And what they do is they literally just generate an offline form and then they walk around with their iPad and they can conduct, conduct their survey. So that's just the extra bit of information for everyone. Fantastic. Yeah, now the offline feature is extremely helpful. Uh, you've mentioned a mine, um, but uh, we do, uh, we have a lot of clients that service uh, into Africa. Um, and connectivity within Africa generally is spotty. So that's where the offline feature has really come into its own. Uh, so Peter, before I hand back to you, um, there is a, a, that's the wrong link. There we go. Uh, so Zoho, uh, well done, Andrew and the team. Uh, they've actually built a, a, a high level guide on net promoter score within Zoho survey. Uh, I'm gonna post this link in the chat as well as for everyone to, to have access to. Uh, it gives a great uh, um, intro into NPS. It gives you the first template to get you to get your yourself started. Uh, a couple of do's and don'ts uh, out of their out of their um, experience and calculations, etc. So have a look at that. Um, and if you're stuck in any form or any way, just give a. Um, you're welcome to give me a call, and we we're, we're happy and we are here to assist you guys. All right. Peter, that's it from my side. Well, Helen, that was great. Thank you so much. Um, Dion, I see you've got your hand up. Um, before, I, before I give you an opportunity, I just wanted to say, in my travel business, it took me 
about two years to fire a guy, one of my guides, because he would get the occasional great review. But I was kind of, I was, uh, because I was asking people to rate on TripAdvisor, people would not rate unless they were really unhappy. Or the people that were somewhat unhappy just never gave me feedback. And that served my ego. So the, what I want to say to you is, it's first, it's a physical process of, you know, park your pride um, and, and be open to negative feedback and then act on it, I suppose. That's, that's, that's the in-person, that's the life system that you need to adopt in your business. And then the technology can support it. The technology is there. Using it is something that we as you know, business owners needs to get around. Um, and that's just my feedback. If I had done this, I would solve my problem a hell of a lot quicker back in the day. Dion, you had a question. A quick one. Um, Willem, thank you. Uh, is it Wilhelm? How do I pronounce oh, Helen, yes. Uh, Helen. But yeah, Willem, you. William, hey, dude, that's all. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. The presentation is amazing. Just a, a quick question. Is there an integration between Zoho and Microsoft Business Central um, ERP that you're aware of? Mm, Andrew, I'll, maybe I'll jump in here. Um, mm. So all our integrations are on what we call Zoho Marketplace. So if you type in marketplace.zoho.com, you'll see that's where all the you know pre-built integrations are sitting. Um, we've got a lot of in integrations with Microsoft, um, but I'm not sure if it's if it's integrated. And it would be which specific app are you looking? Yes. Is it CRM integration or is it survey or? Um, we're in the process of putting the whole ERP system kind of in place. So I'm actually not sure what we're going to lack or what we're going to need um, later on. But I am a fan of, uh, of Zoho. We have used it, um, mm -hmm. but more for our deliveries and that type of thing and tracking it in, uh, than anything else. Um, well, thank you. Yeah, we do have a new app that's actually coming out, Field Services Management. And also root IQ, which tracks deliveries and, and all of that. So I think uh, I'm not sure exactly when I can get a date for you. But okay. um, that's what Zoho is doing is we're building pretty much every app that a business would need. We've got a point of sale application that will be coming out soon as well. Um, I actually got shown an app yesterday called Publish, Zoho Publish, which will come out um, should be in the next few months. And what that'll do is actually allow you to manage all your business reviews. So whether it's on Google My Business, Hot Frog, um, I'm trying to get them to uh, do an integration with TripAdvisor. Um, we're looking at also having an integration with Hello Peter and Yellow Pages so that you can put all your business information into Zoho Publish and it will then push it to all these business listing sites. And then when you get reviews on those sites, it comes straight back in and you can then respond to your reviews. Um, so yeah, lots, lots of apps coming out. Land, Zoho landing page will come out um, can before you definitely for the, the next year. Can you choose just the positive re reviews to publish? <laughs> <laughs> well, well, at least it, it, it notifies you. <laughs> I mean, we spoke, to a, yeah, we spoke to a business the other day and they said that it took them months before they actually got notified of a, a really bad review that was on their Google page. And it was because the person that set up their my business had set it up on their personal Gmail and then had left the company, you know. So it's just important to manage all of that stuff in one place. And one other comment I wanted to make about this net promoter score is that a lot of like really big businesses use it as a KPI for their administrative and support staff. So obviously, if you're looking for a KPI um, to kind of, you know, manage your, your staff's performance or at least incentivize them or motivate them is to get them to get these NPS scores and obviously keep those ratings high. Um, there's also a happiness rating that Zoho Desk has built into it um, where when you finish a support desk ticket, it automatically emails the person and says, you know, how happy were you with our service? And you can say I was, you know, unhappy, neutral, happy. And that then automatically gives your um, support agent a, you know, a, a KPI, happiness rating KPI. We've, we've got that funny enough in place, um, but we don't get a great response from it or I'm not monitoring it. That's probably <laughs> the latter, <laughs> but I'll get my Zyga. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah.
And incentives, hey, seriously, use incentives. A lot more companies are now using incentives to try and, you know, get people to, to do, you know, the, the, um, the reviews or testimonials, um, as well as these MPS scores. And it can be something real simple, like just office, offering them like a discount on the next service, you know. Um, but if you're going to get a review out of it or like a, a testimonial, that's going to be hugely beneficial. Um, and if you can get a video testimonial, that's like the best testimonial you'll ever get. Um, uh, so I, I know a lot of companies are paying these influencers, but all the research has shown that people, the next generation, your generation Z, they want to see like um, genuine customer feedback and testimonials. They, they're not too perturbed about an influencer using a, a service or a brand. Couldn't agree with that, with the video statement. Uh, even, yeah, it's it's absolutely spot on. We we even went and added a studio whereby we record people uh, in our office. It was now pre, pre COVID, before COVID hit. Um, we actually used to have people in our office recording their, their testimonials as an outcome of the service. Uh, it's just so powerful uh, compared to a, a written review. So there's a lot of good good chat going on, but I want to wrap up the session um, just before we run out of time because it's cowboy time at 10 to 10 right now. Um, folks, where can you find all this? Um, um, I, I am not um, a ZOA implementer. Um, I'm the Strategic Alliance Chair, but in order for not to repeat myself to members when they ask these questions, I've set up a website on my personal site. I've put it in the chat, pgtops.com slash Zoho, um, and you will see here some info on it. If you want to sign up using the EO credits, um, I've put a link in here that tells you what it looks like. And you go to the bottom, sign up on this link and be, be, be careful to um, sign up for Zoho One so that you get the full suite of products, right? That's the first thing that sits there. And the other one is if you wanted to make use of Outsource CFO to help you implement the sucker, their information um, sits here and you can use their sign up link of the starter pack, right? So. That's, those are both loaded on there. Um, this is if you wanted to go do IY, this is what if you outsource CFO and there's other tools on there. And at the top, I'm just loading all of these videos. Um, this is the second one. We'll do another one next week where we talk some more about all the different integrations and automations that you can build into the, um, the CRM to help um, push your business forward. And well, Helen will be helping me um, with that again. Right, so um, videos at the top. Um, and step-by-step -step stuff here. And if you need help, talk to Wilhelm and his team at Integrate.